Now a few months back I switched towards using a quick change tooling for the mill. The normal method of swapping tooling in and out of the ER collet chuck works fine, but it is a pretty slow method. So in a bid to improve the process, I bought a Morse taper collet for the mill and several ER20 collets. I then turned down several tool holders on the lathe that would accept the ER collets and would also fit into the Morse taper collet. The result was a very quick yet effective method of swapping tooling in and out of the mill and I've been using it pretty much ever since. Now whilst I was very impressed with the results that I got, there were some issues that needed addressing. For one, there were some run out issues with some of the tool holders. I was impressed with the tapers that I got, especially considering that the lathe isn't really set up for cutting accurate tapers. I had a few people suggest that I try and grind the taper to try and get some better results. Now I don't have the best grinding setup, and I really am asking a lot from this lathe, but I gave it a go anyway. Now it did improve the run out slightly, but I was hoping for better results. I also replaced all of the ER20 collets. I suspected that these inexpensive ones were the cause of some of my run out problems. This one here is brand new and as we can see when I opened it up it had rust on it and it had pitting and that's just the issues that I can easily see. So I ended up replacing them with some high quality ones. For my next version of tool holders, instead of machining them from scratch, I've gone down a different route. The chances are if you've been on eBay or AliExpress, you probably come across these ER collet tool holders. They go for about $12 a piece and they fit various ER collet sizes. Now my first impressions are pretty positive. The website advertises them as heat treated carbon steel and each surface is very nicely ground in. And looking at it, that taper certainly looks a lot nicer than the one I was able to make, so I have some pretty high expectations. Honestly, for 12 bucks a piece, I'm pretty impressed. Now because the tool holders are 20 millimeters in diameter, I also had to buy a new Morse taper collet. The old one was too small. Now that wouldn't be an issue, except for the fact that all of my tooling was made to fit the old collet. So if this system works, I'll probably have to end up remaking all of my other tooling. Now the first thing that I need to do is cut down the tool holders. The shank on these ones is 100 millimeters long and the collet will only chuck about 30. I was a bit curious as to how hard they made the steel, so I did a quick bite test on the shank and it comes out to being between 45 and 50 Rockwell C hardness. Now I cut the part slightly over length, so I'll take it to the lathe and cut it to final length. In the lathe I'm going to have to use these copper soft jaws to hold the part because I'm clamping on the threads and I don't want to damage them. The copper is soft and should protect the threads. With that done, we can see how it looks pretty much identical to the old tool holder, although it is a little bit bigger. Now all I have to do is cut down the rest.
And that's the four tool holders done. I'm going to use the old collet nuts, mostly because they are slightly higher quality than the ones that came with the new tool holders. Now I'm sure some of you at this point might be thinking, these tool holders look very similar to these off the shelf ER20 collet holders. And in fairness, they do. These ones are probably the best off the shelf option since they are the correct shape and length and that means I don't have to cut them down to size. The only reason why I didn't go for them is the shanks on these ones are 3 quarter inch and the only 3 quarter inch more stable collets I could find use an imperial drawbar. Now getting one for the mill isn't impossible, but my chucks and Morse taper adapters use metric threads, so for me it really doesn't make sense to get those ones. It's much easier for me to just cut down the 100mm shanks to size. Alright, let's go and see if it actually works. So off the bat it fits together really nicely, which is a good sign. Looking at it by eye, I couldn't see any run out, which is a really good sign. And that looks really good. Looking at the test indicator, that looks to be about 0.01 millimeters of run out exactly. Keep in mind that this end mill is held in a collet, and that holder is held in another collet. That's a lot of potential sources of run out. Overall, that is really impressive. Now the old setup really struggled with super heavy cuts. So what I'm doing here is a 5mm depth of cut and a 100% width of cut on a 8mm end mill in some aluminium. And whilst that wasn't the best finish, it really is hogging through this aluminium, much better than the old setup would. I'll quickly do a finish pass, and looking at it, it looks a lot better. I'll finish off by doing some quick cuts in steel. The end mill is a little bit worn, but it's doing 3mm slots in the steel. That's good stuff. Overall, I'm really happy with the results that I got here. This is what I was aiming to achieve the first time I did this. 10 microns of run out, easy to change the tooling, it's pretty affordable, it pretty much ticks all the boxes that I was aiming for. So looking at it like this, I'll probably use this setup from now on. There are still one or two more things that I'd like to try though. I wouldn't mind making up a Weldon Shank side locking holder, and possibly some shrink fit tooling for some carbide end mills that I have turning up, but that's going to have to be for another day. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you learned something new, and with that, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.